Kelly, this was CEO Jensen Wong's opportunity to lay out the company's longer-term vision and what he calls is the start of a new industrial revolution. He also provided an update on NVIDIA's Blackwell, the highly anticipated AI platform that is expected to come to market before the end of the year. Uh, he didn't really provide an update on the timeline, but Wong does have very, very high hopes. The Blackwell architecture platform will likely be the most successful product in our history and even for the entire computer and even of the entire computer history. Now, Huang went on to outline the role that NVIDIA's Gen AI products are playing across different industries from healthcare, where it's working with Johnson & Johnson, Medtronic, Amgen on gene sequencing and drug discovery, the cloud players, Meta, Microsoft, Google, among others. Huang also added that NVIDIA is taking a collaborative approach on privacy and regulation, working with state and federal agencies to address these issues. At the start of the meeting, the stock was trading at $124 a share. You'll see it's trading now at 123 and change. NVIDIA recently had its annual shareholders meeting, and the company's CEO, Jensen Huang, dropped several bombshell announcements that are set on changing the company forever. The CEO said that NVIDIA has taken a number of steps to maintain its dominant position in the field of AI chips, and we're going to uncover some of them in today's video. Additionally, we'll talk about a new bullish price target on NVIDIA stock set by Cantor Fitzgerald analysts, so don't miss out. But before we do that, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. Let's get more on NVIDIA. Go back there in the AI trade with the Milius head of technology research, Ben Reitzies. Ben, welcome. Good to have you with us. Hey, Tyler. Great to be here. Is what's been going on in, we sort of touched on it with Karen a moment ago, is what's been going on with uh, NVIDIA a kind of expectable phenomenon, something we've seen before? So an investor who is in there for the ride and goes, oh boy, we were down 15% last week. This, this, is, this the, is this the end of the game here? Am I, should I be out of it? What's going on here? Well, I think that NVIDIA has these moves intra-quarter where people find themselves underweight and they have to catch up and then it runs and then there's all sorts of things. This last week there was a rebalance and I think a lot of people were playing that and then it kind of unwound and it created a big move. But in general, NVIDIA has nailed the full stack approach. The only thing that I've experienced like this is, pro well, maybe two things, maybe, maybe the Wintel monopoly of the 90s or duopoly, whatever they were, and then Apple getting the iPhone. And the full stack approach, when people nail it, when a company nails it, is able to uh, generate a disproportionate share of the profits for that sector. And in their case, some people argue it's like all the profits. Well, that, that sounds like you're describing the word we used earlier, and that is ecosystem, that yeah. they have built it, they own it, it is their game to lose. That's right. What they did, win. well, the foresight that they had is, is unparalleled. They, they uh, you know, that's why we were kind of laughing when they, I, some people asked me, are they being investigated? Like, for what? For foreseeing the biggest tech change ever and, you know, they should be punished? <laughs> but, okay. But what they did is they, they built a language, a computing language and an ecosystem that allows you to monetize AI. And, uh, you know, obviously they're killing it. And um, I think that people, uh, this is, probably got the most upside of the MAG-7 that, that we cover, um, even though we really like Apple and, and a few others. At NVIDIA's shareholders meeting, Jensen Huang said that the company has already transformed from a company focused on gaming to a company focused on data centers and announced that NVIDIA is planning on partnering up with more computer makers and cloud providers to create new markets for AI. Jensen also talked about NVIDIA's upcoming Blackwell GPUs and said that they would be the most successful product in NVIDIA's history, but hasn't provided information on its price or availability. It wouldn't be too much of a surprise if this turns out to be true, as the Blackwell chips are supposed to operate at least two times faster than their predecessor, the H100. NVIDIA's customers, who are already competing over the H100, would probably not mind paying a premium price for an even more advanced chip. Jensen also acknowledged the strong competition in the industry, but he said that NVIDIA is offering chips whose performance and operating costs make them a better value than others that may be cheaper to buy. In addition to that, Jensen said that NVIDIA has achieved a virtuous circle in which the number of customers it has allows it to build products that attract even more customers. 
He reassured investors, saying that the NVIDIA platform is broadly available through every major cloud provider and computer maker, creating a large and attractive install base for developers and customers, which makes the company's platform more valuable to its customers. Shareholders approved a $34 million pay package for Jensen during the meeting, recognizing the important role he played to boost the company's performance, and this opinion is shared by analysts at Cantor Fitzgerald. In fact, the analysts recently released a note that said that they've never seen a more torrid pace of technology innovation and subsequent reduction in the cost of compute as they are seeing today, all driven by NVIDIA and its full system approach. So, let's get into what the analysts had to say about NVIDIA stock and their new price target for it. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. I have to ask you, CJ, uh, in terms of these price targets, how many times have you raised it uh, over the last year or so as NVIDIA just kind of continues this upward trajectory? Yeah, good morning, Leslie. Um, you know, it's probably two or three times. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, the, 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 the great bang was, you know, a, a, a year ago, you know, when you had that massive beat in, in August. And, you know, I think since then, um, you know, data center uh, has continued to surprise. But when you when you take a step back and you think about acceleration inside uh, data centers looking forward, you know, we're only about eight or nine percent penetrated. And Jensen's view of the world is that we're going to 100 percent. And if that's right, uh, there's a long uh, runway ahead. And I would uh, I would uh, surmise that the street will be raising its price targets uh, for, for many, many, many times uh, over the coming years. Do you think that at these levels, the pace of innovation that you describe, the runway that you describe is already priced in, or do you think it's still misunderstood by the market? I don't. Uh, you know, I think that uh, the the seismic shift last year was the announcement uh, of moving to an annual uh, cadence uh, in terms of new technology uh, releases. Uh, and it's a very powerful uh, change statement where essentially I, I think Jensen is basically saying to, to everyone else that he competes with, catch me if you can. Uh, and, and his holistic view of the data center as one large GPU means that he's not only investing in, in, in core GPU, but CPUs, uh, the networking, overall networking fabric, all of the connectivity. And, you know, I think that if he can do what he has done in the prior decade over the coming decade, uh, that the the gains that he will offer and the reduction in the cost of compute will truly make AI ubiquitous. According to the analysts, NVIDIA is creating a strategic inflection point in the proliferation of AI, with no signs of slowing down due to accelerating product cycles, continued software innovation, and optimizations across the stack that enable significant scaling of compute units. NVIDIA's already strong competitive advantage continues to become stronger, forcing its peers to keep playing a game of catch-up. And based on that, the analysts expect NVIDIA stock to push higher. They also noted that advancements like ChatGPT mark the beginning of AI's growth, with future improvements in logic, multimodal functions, and cultural adaptations. As such, they continue to view the company's opportunity morphing from a percentage of data center capex to a percentage of global IT spend, and soon to a percentage of GDP spending. And that's what led them to reiterate a top pick rating on the stock and raise the price target from $140 to $175. This forecast boost implies a nearly 39% lift from NVIDIA stock's current price. With the analyst's bullish stance and Jensen's comments in mind, should investors buy NVIDIA stock now? Let's find out. But first, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make. So if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. Does not derail the company's growth trajectory. It is still and will remain the undisputed leader in the GPU space, uh, a market that he only sees growing from here. He's Daniel Newman, CEO of the Futurum Group. Daniel, welcome. Good to have you with us. Is there anything intrinsically worrisome about a company that basically triples its market value at such a high scale to begin with, from $1 trillion to $3 trillion in such a short period of time? What does it suggest, if anything, about the future trajectory of the stock? Yeah, you have to look at the trajectory of AI as a whole. You know, when the stock was trading at about one-tenth the value, I said, this is the company to look out for. It had this secular uh, tailwinds that AI is going to deliver to the market. And it was not just selling GPUs, but it's selling the full compute and software stack. And that's so important 
for people to understand how when you gain a market advantage and now they have 96, 97 percent of this GPU space, you heard Jensen on that soundbite talking about having Google and having Amazon and having, you know, every major OEM using its hardware, that this entire trend line, and it's going to flow out to Salesforce, it's going to flow to Microsoft and all its software, and then eventually to the industries. That's what Jensen is saying. That's what investors are betting on. And it's going to be hard for competition. There is no native predator in the wild right now. There's companies trying, but no one can really compete right now well, that's with the, what NVIDIA is doing. That's if you put $10,000 in NVIDIA stock 10 years ago, you would have $2.74 million today. This is a life-changing return of over 27,400%, but you should also keep in mind that over that time frame, the company has experienced several boom and bust cycles based on demand for its GPUs. In other words, NVIDIA's future depends on whether the lofty expectations for the AI industry are actually met. The thing is, NVIDIA has become almost a pure play on data center AI hardware, with its other segments fading into irrelevance. In the first quarter, data center sales represented 87% of the company's $26 billion in revenue, while the once core gaming and PC segment has fallen to just 10%. Many expect that NVIDIA's diversification will likely worsen because the data center segment is growing significantly faster than its other segments. This dynamic makes the company vulnerable to a potential slowdown in demand for AI chips, which is a significant risk over the coming decade. But investors shouldn't be too concerned about that. In fact, the global data center market, which is expected to increase to a valuation of $622 billion by 2030 from $301 billion in 2023. Also, the global generative AI market, which NVIDIA is a leader in, is expected to cross $1 trillion by 2030. So, there are still many large opportunities for NVIDIA to capitalize on, and NVIDIA stock still looks capable of outperforming the S&P 500 over the next 10 years, especially as the AI industry expands and moves away from simple chatbots into more advanced use cases. Between gaming, data centers, automotive revenue, and other opportunities, this is a business that still has much more room to get bigger. While NVIDIA is at a $3 trillion market cap and is trading at more than 70 times earnings given its dominance in AI, it can still be a good stock to buy and hold for a very long time. But with an already large market cap, investors should be careful to temper their expectations for the AI stock. It would be extremely difficult for it to replicate the type of returns it has generated over the past 10 years. But since we're talking about NVIDIA, I wouldn't say that it's impossible. But what do you think about NVIDIA stock? Is it a buy at the current price? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget to tell us what your valuation for NVIDIA is. If you would like to know what companies like NVIDIA have been up to these past few days, go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there.